Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This week, I am turning my attention to the interior of Astra Roof. We got a few things going on that I wanna iron out. It's time to take care of the little gremlins. So right now, my cluster doesn't work. I'm not registering speed there, and my radio doesn't work either. I just figure, let's just dedicate one episode to the interior where I can get the radio out and replace it and get the speedo kind of dialed in. I've started a new line of videos and my intention is to make them really short, really to the point, but still try to pack as much information as possible. So you'll see them, they're called boost videos. So my goal is 10 to 12 minute videos, hopefully less tackling things. So if you're in the garage, you're underneath the car and you need a little bit of help figuring out where to go and what to do, you can just pull this up on YouTube, get right to the point and get on with getting your car back on the road. So in that end, I'm going to separate this into two videos. This first video will be focused on the speedometer cable and getting the instrument cluster out of the dashboard. And on the next video, I'll tackle the radio. I'm going to start tackling the dash right now. Well, the speedometer portion of it. So I'm just going to get this up and out of the way, see if there's anything clearly wrong with it. So what you do, as you can see, there's no screws on the, on the face of this. So what you want to do is you want to get your finger like right back behind here and just pull. And you just do that over all four corners and eventually you'll be able to lift it up out of place. So let's do that and we'll come back to where the screws are. All right, from there, you just have these four screws to take out, one down here, one up here, same thing on the other side, and then you'll be able to move that out of the way. I've seen a lot of issues where this dimmer like collapses and it's like inside. So at least now you can get to that if that's happening on your car, just by unscrewing those two, and then there's a third bolt right down here. You'll be able to pop that out. It's also attached to the lighting switch on this side. Um, my dimmer switch is acting crazy. Um, let me know if that's normal. I, I would expect a more satisfying click and maybe even the LEDs working, but that doesn't happen on my car. But yeah, let me know if this is normal, but let's pop this off. All right, so I tried pulling on this thing. It is just not budging. I think there's some wires that are just close to the back of this that are just not giving it up. So in order to get a better view, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this surround piece off and there's six bolts, three on this side and then three on the other side. We'll just pop those off. We're underneath the car right now. And here is the vehicle speed cable. So we'll unscrew and pull that out. Here's what it looks like on the other end. You'll also see a clip right here, and then it'll start to run there. Never mind this. This is this is the emergency brake cable. But this is this is that cable. So you'll follow that and then it'll go up into the firewall. All right, so that is the clip. It was held on by a 10 millimeter bolt right there. And as soon as I got it down, I think I found the cause of the, of the issue. If you look right there, that's a flat spot <laughs> in it. And you can see a bit of cable right there. So it's hard to see on, it's hard to see on camera, but it's definitely bad. Look at that, that's horrible. So we'll get it out, we'll route it up through here. And then, you know, that should give the other side a little bit more room to, to pull out. So right down there, that's the cable that I pulled out. And if you come right here under the hood, underneath the brake booster, or my Hydro Boost setup, you'll see that same cable. So you can actually start pulling on it and you'll see it start to start to move there. 
here it is right here, right? So you're taking up some of that here and you see it pop back around. Now, I thought I had a one piece cable, but it looks like I have a two piece and I can actually see where it joins. So let me get this out of the way. Uh, there we go. All right, so we have this right here. We can take a, a nut and a vice grip and loosen that. And that way I can start to feed it back in there. And that will give the cluster some slack and I can push it out or pull it out there. Nope. Not coming off. So let's cut it off. And I'll start feeding it back in into the interior and hopefully that'll be enough to pull it all the way out. So this was the hardest dash I've ever taken off in my life. <laughs> Let me show you what I had to do. So we're already limited with a tiny bit of broom, but if you're looking at the back of this unit, you have to push down on this bracket and that will get you to loosen this side. So you can pop it off as you're holding that. You also have a small ground wire that comes in from this side that you have to unhook from here. And I believe that's with a six millimeter. And then you also have this thing that bolts or clips in right here. And that's held in with a six millimeter as well as that. They're both six millimeter. You gotta take that off. You got your check engine light bulb here. And after you do all of that and this clip here, because you got limited room and you have to come from the bottom with a pick tool and push it up and then you can release it. This is from this unit, this thing right here. And that just pops off easily. By the time you have any space between your dash and the cluster, it's already unplugged. So that's easy. But you have to contend with those five things to take it off. Now I can show you that fray a little bit better. That's what I had there. All right, so I've put on, I've put on a good amount of miles since I've had the Buick. And I was registering speed maybe like once or twice, and it was always really low miles an hour, and then it would just go back to zero. Which is kind of why I was thinking it was the speedometer cable. Also, my, arc, my, my odometer, the numbers right down here at the bottom, that hasn't changed much at all since I've got it as well. So I thought, since the cable is damaged anyway, let's try to actuate it and see if the odometer will turn over. If it does, that lets me know that my cable is bad. Now, you gotta be careful, right? You don't wanna damage anything. You gotta get your drill in reverse and keep it there. Let's do it. There it is. All right. So my odometer's turning. I'm seeing it go to eight and probably close to nine right about now. So that lets me know that it's working. My, my unit right here is working, which is a huge relief because this will probably be the most expensive part of the repair if it needed it. So with this working fine, we can turn our attention to getting the replacement speedometer cable and getting it back in the car. I've taken a measurement and it looks like we are at the 101 inch cable. So if you're on Rock Auto and you need to know, that's the one, it's 101 inches. Okay, so it's been another day and I figured why not try to part store, see if I can get these parts just a little bit quicker, a little impatient, fault me there. So I went to my local parts store and I found CA3003. It is a hundred inch cable for the Buick. I also found an ignition control module that'll go on T-top. And I just wanna take a look at this new one match it up to the old one 
make sure that the ends look good, make sure that the wire that comes out looks about the same as well. Before we put them to our, our 35 year old parts, let's make sure that they look good and they work well. So with that, let's rip it open. I have to go to the local hub uh, auto parts store to, to get it. So it took me about half an hour each way, but well worth waiting. Well worth doing that versus waiting a couple days. That auto parts store cable was only $20. So I'm spending a few moments here to make sure that both ends of the cable and the cable itself are perfectly aligned. Everything looked great on there and it looked like it was gonna be a perfect fit. I also matched the length of both cables to make sure we're still at the 101 inch. Now from there, I can take a look at the bracket and transfer that from the old cable over to the new and a grommet from the old cable over to the new. The best way to remove that grommet is just by cutting the cable and sliding it off. Now here's best practice for reinstallation. Here's what I recommend. You take some WD-40 or some other type of lubricant and you spray on the inside. All right. Then you take the side that's going to the back of the unit, the back of the speedometer unit, you lube that up too. Now, this needs to plug in into the firewall from underneath the hood. So you gotta keep the orientation in mind. So you're almost gonna back it in. This is the flat side. You're gonna push it onto this unit. So right there. And if you continue to force, you'll get the rubber to flip and you'll be good to go. Don't be afraid to help it by bending over some of that rubber so that it goes over the neck of the cable. And then there you go. Now, when you install it, you go in from underneath the hood, straight through the hole. You're gonna end up plugging the hole with this and you'll have your path right into the back of the speedometer. And then of course you could take this side and snake it underneath the car and attach it to the frame and then the transmission. All right, so here's a tip if you're trying to get that cable routed from underneath the hood to the frame and the floor. You leave a flashlight there. And then you take a look underneath the hood and you take a look at all the areas where you see light. Now, let me turn off this light so you can see that clearly. If you look right in the middle of the screen where the cable is, that is an opportunity to snake that wire down there. You don't wanna go over here because that's way too close to the exhaust and the steering column. So you wanna stay far to my right of that. And as you feed this down and you keep it pretty close to the, pretty close to the fender, you'll see that pocket. I know it's kinda of hard to see. You see that? You just keep it close to that fender and you route it all the way down and it'll follow that till you pretty much get to the bottom. Whew. All right, close. So we're just, just north of that hole. We're behind the fender, thankfully. We, we wanna get right back in there, so. I can just do a little bit more adjusting from here, especially when the car is up in the air and get it routed the right way. All right, good night so far. The bears are winning and my cable is in. So now I just gotta get this mounted up in here. I'm gonna throw you over here. I'll keep it out of time-lapse so you can see what I'm doing. When I took my unit off, I, I kept the two screws that need to go back in there. So I'll, have, I'll keep these handy so I can connect them really easily. They appear to be six millimeters, so, or five millimeters, so uh, keep that handy. What I typically do is I'll connect the wires that give me the longest reach first and then work my way backwards. This, this wire right here is probably the most important one.
it reads the back of this speedometer as this uh, as this wheel turns. So let me see if I can show you. You see that blade that's moving back there? This is an optical reader for that blade. And then that'll translate into miles per hour that you see displayed on the screen. So a really cool setup. Nice for 1984. In any case, that's what I'll hook up first. The, the green box that, that connects to this, it's loose back there in the dash. Not sure if that's supposed to be the way it is, but it is. And that gives me a lot of, a lot of slack to get this connected. Remember, you're dealing with delicate connections. You don't need a lot of torque on these, on these, on these screws. It's going to go up here. Ooh. Let's get this cable connected first because I'm losing a lot of leeway. And then we'll plug you in. There we go. Finally, oh no, we got two more things. This ground harness that's over here. Forgot about that. You wanna get a firm connection on that because if I recall correctly, this supplies the ground to all of these ribbon connectors in the back. And then we'll connect this check engine light wire as well. All right, so we have optical wire, wire harness, ground, check engine light, and then there's that fifth ribbon cable harness that we need to just push back into place and it'll reconnect. And then we should be good. I'm gonna lift the entire assembly up and try to get that lined up. Let me bring you all a little bit closer so you can see what I did wrong with the speedometer routing. So as you can see, this cable is routed underneath this bracket and it needs to be routed on top of it. It's placing a lot of strain on the connection at the back of the speedometer. Whereas if it, had, if it was up here, it would have a lot more room. So I'm going to push it out and try to guide it to come up here. All right, so now it's in the right way and I had to go all the way back to where it first comes in from the firewall and you push it up and you try to route it through this hole and if you, if you're real lucky, you'll get to the point where you can fit it in here. But that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get it that high so that it can connect to the back of this and work well. And now I can just start reconnecting all of these screws. So it's early in the morning and I ran into a snag. I had to pull the dash all the way back out because I had an issue with the miles per hour rating. Digital dash owners, if you have a situation where you turn on your car and your speedometer LCD is just blank, bad news. One of the resistors in here is likely bad and you'll have to take it out and take it over to Casper's. Casper's Electronics, they sell a lot of parts for our G bodies and Grand Nationals in particular. But I was having that issue when I put everything back together, I was freaking out. I took a look on their website and it's about $360 for the service. Great news, somebody can fix it, they've identified the issue. But I wanna get out on the road. I don't wanna have to sideline this thing for you know another few days. So what I did is I took it out, I used a heat gun to heat up the soldering board by adjusting the resistors and it worked. Don't know how temporary it is, it's likely is just temporary, but it worked for me.
I forgot to record this and the car's on the ground, but I got the bolt to that frame cross member and then it plugged into the trans. Ooh, okay. So I haven't taken any steps to replace the radio yet, but I am anxious to see if this speedometer cable is the ticket. So I'm gonna take it outside just for a quick run up and down the driveway and see if it works. Okay. Hey, okay, it works. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that worked. So that's all there is to it. Replacing your speedometer cable, removing your instrument cluster, it's all really easy. Just take your time, do it right, and you won't have any problems. Any questions, comments, thoughts that arise, just drop it in chat. I try to be as responsive as possible. Just give me a little time and I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching. Talk to you on the next one.